We're going to start our coverage of terminal operations by focusing on the for each family of terminal operations. And we're going to do this in the context of our, of our Hamlet program, which is the, the one that we've been looking at in the EX12 folder. So several terminal operations return no values at all, namely for each and for each ordered. And I'll talk about how they differ here in just a second. We're going to take a look at both for each and for each ordered with an emphasis on for each because it's more straightforward and not that different from for each ordered except for the ordering property. The example, again, just takes the characters from the Hamlet play, gets rid of anybody that doesn't start with a lowercase or uppercase H, consistently capitalizes everything, sorts the results, and then we'll print the results using the side effect of calling the printlin operation, the printlin method, via the system.out colon colon printlin method reference. Now, here's the interesting part. You can see this, this kind of makes sense, right? You, you're printing the results of the standard output. However, you can actually pass in any method reference or lambda expression for that matter, if you want, that has a side effect. So here's another example that has a side effect. This is kind of an interesting example. What we're gonna do is we're gonna define a local variable called results, which is a list that's implemented using array list. We also, of course, could have used linked list if we wanted to. And what's going to happen here is we're going to pass results colon colon add as the method reference to for each. And so what will happen in this case is when for each is run, it'll call the add method on the results variable and then add the elements one at a time in order, in encounter order, to the results list. Now that, of course, could have been a, could have been a global field if we wanted to, static global field. I just happened to put it here to make the program easier to understand and more self-contained. This is a little tricky though, and I don't recommend you do this. So um, if you're gonna use for each, uh, almost always is the case that you're gonna wanna use it with just a simple uh, printlin type of operation, just to have that simple side effect. And in fact, for each is, is primarily useful for, for debugging and, and simple programs. You typically don't use it in more complex production programs like the ones you're doing for your assignment. And the reason why this is tricky is because you have to remember to initialize the variable you pass in as part of the, the side effect parameter to the for each operation, terminal operation. And if you fail to do that, if you just say list string results, semicolon, then you're going to have weird problems like null pointer exceptions, which are bad. Likewise, be very, very careful. In fact, stay away from trying to use for each with side effects like this if you use a parallel stream. Now, I realize we haven't talked a lot about parallel streams yet, but if you were to stick the, the word parallel in here, then this processing would take place within a pool of threads. And this would cause chaos and insanity because you'd be having separate threads simultaneously calling the add method on the results variable, but that is not a synchronized collection. So, an array list is intentionally, explicitly not synchronized, which means that if multiple threads are trying to add to it, the internal mutable shared state, basically the, the linked list or the array list that's being used here to implement the list abstraction is going to be corrupted by multiple threads calling add simultaneously. And that will be really nasty and really difficult to try to track down those kinds of bugs. You could, if you like to live dangerously, if you like to jump out of airplanes with out of parachute kind of thing, you could use some kind of concurrent collection, such as a concurrent linked queue. And that would work in the sense that you would end up with the results added without corrupting them because concurrent linked queue has synchronizers built into it. But that's still error prone and it's, it's inefficient. You just don't want to do this. So stay away from using for each or for each, but well, stay away from using for each in general with side effect oriented variables that either are not synchronized, that's really bad, or need synchronization. There are way, way, way better ways to solve this particular need by using parallel streams in conjunction with uh, reduction terminal operations like reduce or collect, as we'll see. Now, the interesting thing is if you were to run this code, let's say that we were to use the concurrent linked queue, so at least it's not going to be wrong, 
what you would find is, especially if you have a large number of elements in your original data source, let's say you were um, not going to, to use characters from Hamlet, but I don't know, characters from the Lord of the Rings book, so there's probably hundreds of them, uh, or Harry Potter, right, where there's hundreds of characters to be considered. If you were to run that in parallel, you would find that the result queue that came back from this would have the results all intermixed, so they would no longer correspond to the encounter order. Now, they wouldn't be incorrect, they'd just be uh, ordered in some random way. And, and that's by design. For each does not attempt to preserve so-called encounter order. It just says, whatever the order the processing takes place and things get put into that output queue, that's fine. And there's certain situations where that is perfectly fine. You don't care about the order. Um, if order matters, if you want to make sure that things show up in the same order in the result as they came in in the input, which is called encounter order, in that case, you should use the for each ordered terminal operation. And what that does is that actually uses a lock under the hood to make sure that encounter order is preserved. So the consequence of this is that it'll run a little slower, but you'll get a more deterministic result, or you'll get a deterministic result where the output order will be the same as the encounter order. Again, that may or may not be necessary. I think an even better rule of thumb is just stay away from using these side effect laden terminal operations with parallel streams and uh, that's usually the best way to go. Not always, but it's a good way to start. So this for each ordered thing really only is significant for parallel streams. You would never want to use for each ordered on a sequential stream because the ordering is going to be dictated by the encounter order anyway, just by virtue of the way that streams works under the hood. So that's the end of the for each family of terminal operations. As I said before, that's really not the interesting part of terminal operations. The real interesting part are the so-called reduction operations, and that's what we'll turn our attention to next.